Good morning, and welcome to Jew in the City Speaks with your host, Allison Josephs, also known as Jew in the City. We talk about how the world views Jews on the show a lot, Orthodox Jews in particular. That's our founding mission. But sometimes the way that uh, Jews are viewed is plays a part in how they interact with other people. Um, we talked about Black Jewish relations on this show. Um, there are certainly, um, you know, opportunities where uh, different peoples of faith can come together um, because there's a lot of attacks on peoples of faith in media in general. Um, but an area that we haven't sort of tackled too often, but certainly is on my mind, um, are Muslim Jewish relations. My family was in Morocco um, a year plus ago for Passover. We actually almost went to uh, UAE that year um, because it's another place where there's now uh, increasing peace with Israel. Um, and something just caught my eye recently. Um, there's a, an activist, a peace activist on Instagram um, who is a content creator around history and language. His name is Louis Al-Sharif, um, and he's using his platform and his channel to uh, continue promoting peace and better understanding between the Jewish and Muslim community out of UAE. And he posted recently about um, a new law that's coming to UAE with increasing uh, tolerance for uh, non-Muslim religions. So I thought this was a great opportunity to kind of have a conversation about Jewish and Muslim relations and where we are and where we can hopefully go and kind of maybe some of the shared challenges we face in terms of our representation. So, uh, Louis, thank you so much for joining us today. A real pleasure, Allison. Thank you so much for having me. So, you know, um, a lot of times um, the things that we see, um, you know, sadly around Jewish Muslim relations are not so positive. Um, and um, not so peaceful and not so hopeful. Um, and, you know, I'm a person that loves to build bridges, um, and I did not grow up as an observant Jew. And, you know, when I became more observant, I automatically felt um, a kinship with other people of faith. Um, interestingly enough, um, one of, you know, my sister's best friends when we were younger was um, a, a Persian Muslim girl, not terribly religious, but... Um, you know, she was sort of like this childhood friend, and we were very close in her home. I actually was closer with her before I met any Jewish person of people. Um, you know, as I became observant in high school, um, some of my closest friends that understood my journey to, you know, a more faith-based life were some of my Christian friends who understood what I was doing more than, um, you know, some of my secular Jewish friends. So, um, you know, as someone who is building bridges, um, I, I very much uh, appreciate that because I think as much as we can kind of find that shared humanity— um, you know, it's such an important thing. So can you um, kind of give us a start on how did you um, become a person who, you know, was using your platform? I, I think I understand. It was originally for languages um, and history, but you've come now to use it to promote peace. So how, when, why did this begin? Well, thank you so much, Allison, for having me in your show and a real pri a privilege. And um, so... I need to start from the beginning, so bear with me a bit, okay? So I was um, uh, I was raised um, in an environment where the Arab media, you know, in the Arab world in general, the media spouts hate against Jews, and it was not positive at all. And as, as you as you say, everyone is the product of of what they uh, of what they get from the media. So um, I do remember the turning point was in two thousand and ten when I was uh, 28 at that time. Now, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm really old. I'm really old, I'm not that young. Like many people think, I'm 40. So when I was 28 at that time, so I traveled to France um, and the intention was to study, uh, to learn French. I have something for languages. I learned English through Hollywood movies. I'm very attached to the US. I studied in, in Penn State, Proud Nittany Lion. So uh, the thing is that uh, I wanted to study uh, learn another language and it was uh, it was french because because this was like the uh um uh the trend so if you're if you're speaking good english you need to learn french so i did something called a host family program is that when you live with a family and in france by the way allison they would never disclose the religion of the family to you so I remember in my preference, I, 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 I wrote a few things like I want to stay with a, with a Muslim family, Moroccan, Algerian, because, you know, they are Arabs like us. So we, we, would, we would actually um, it would be made easier. But the, the, the school 
cannot really tell you the religion of the family. So they will just tell you you want pets, no pets, so, stuff like that. So I ended up with a Jewish family. Wow. And it was like and it was like a shock to me, to be very honest. I, rem I remember when I entered the house and I saw him again, David, the star of David. I was like, uh, no. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I want you to understand that when I, when, I, when I was like that, I was the product of the media. Mm -hmm. The media depicts Jews in a very negative way. Jews have fangs. Jews are evil. Jews are conspiring against Muslims. So it was like it was like very unfortunate, but uh, I, I have to tell people how I changed through this journey thirteen years thirteen years ago. So I really I, I was I, I didn't feel comfortable. I asked for a change. I asked the school for a transfer, and the school said it will take two weeks. So I had to bear with this family for two weeks, and it, I, I I wasn't feeling comfortable to be very honest because we have so many things in the media. They tell you if a Jew gives you a water, it might be poisoned. I'm sorry to say this, but this is. Like, this is reality. So I remember in this day, the mother was, uh, it was a mother, and uh, and she has, uh, like, a daughter and two uh, and two boys. So the mother was very, uh, I would say this, very compassionate, and she took me shopping with her and stuff like that, and I was, like, giving myself time to learn more about uh, about French because my, 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 my main mission was to learn French. So th this family really made this change to me and when they they were not very religious but they were like um, uh, how to say this i would say like myself i'm not a religious muslim i pray of course and everything but you know i'm a regular guy so they were just keeping the shabbat they were doing things and um and with with time in the two weeks i really learned a lot about about so many things in in of course i stayed for like four months but in the first two weeks and then i called the school i canceled the transfer Hmm. But I learned I learned a lot from the the mother was so wise and she took the shot in 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 a very wise manner and they are the reason why I changed so uh, through this family in 2010 my eyes were wide open on Judaism on Hebrew on on the things that I'm doing right now so this knowledge comes from France that's why I have a special love for the Jewish French. Uh, uh, people. I also I also stayed by a Jewish French family uh, during college, um, but I was planning to stay but with Jews. Um, but it's really um, it is so heartwarming. It is so beautiful. Um, I also was raised to hate a certain type of Jews through media. I was a proud secular Jew, but I was raised to hate the Orthodox Jews. Um, and there are certainly um, you know Americans who might like regular Jews, but not Zionist Jews. It's so fascinating how well how powerful media is in terms of creating a certain image uh, in our minds. And the truth is that this um, Persian friend that I mentioned earlier, she was learning Farsi, you know, through kind of just, I guess, textbooks that the parents gave over from Iran. And she showed my sister um, some of the horrible things it said about Jews. So that didn't surprise me that you were raised like that. But um, do you feel like this was sort of um, kind of a God, um, like a, a moment of divine uh, like intervention or providence that you were placed in this home? Like, did this sort of set you on maybe a, a life mission? It has to be. Well, it has to be. Because to be very honest, Allison, when I see people interacting with the videos that I've been... By the way, I've been doing videos for a very long time. But now I... I uh, but recently I learned how to do reels. Mm -hmm. Because uh, reels, you know, they have certain techniques you need to learn and stuff like that. So this is why the videos went viral and they are still going viral. And... And the messages I received from from Jews here and there, especially from Israel, it's really heartwarming. And I believe this was a divine message because, you know what, Allison, when people say, are you religious? The word religious to me means someone who hates those who were not born like him. Hmm. So because you were merely by coincidence born a Jew and I was born a Muslim by coincidence as well, some people say we must hate each other. And this is what I don't like about being religious. So I don't I don't classify myself as religious. I classify myself as someone who uh, loves God, worship God, a proud Muslim, of course, but not the word religious has so many bad meanings in my head. So we, I, we work with Orthodox Jews who have also been uh, raised by, I would say, extremist, unhealthy religious people. And I think, you know, being able to separate out the actual teachings um, and the healthy perspective on it from um, toxic people, uh, abusive people, 
I had a really interesting conversation with a Muslim woman working in representation in Hollywood. And, you know, Hollywood is obsessed with the story of the Orthodox Jew leaving their tradition, which I find to be the most offensive dynamic that you could only be a good Jew if you're an anti-Zionist Jew and if you're, you know, a not that Jewish Jew. If you're too into the very specific Jewish things, that's not good. Um, but when I said to her, these stories that we've seen up close in our organization are just a lot of abusive homes and dysfunctional homes. She said, you know, in her world, the people that go off to become terrorists and send their kids out to do that sort of thing are also the most dysfunctional and abusive homes. And so, you know, when those things are happening close to home, it can lead to uh, some really problematic um, behavior. So I completely uh I agree with everything you're saying. I feel completely aligned. The word religion, for me, religious isn't a bad word, but I understand how it can get used like that. I one time sat next to a Muslim woman on a plane, and I saw her muttering before we took off. And I'm kind of a weird person that just likes to strike up conversations with strangers, like, you know, writing to a random person on Instagram. And I couldn't help myself. I said, excuse me, are you saying a Wayfarer's prayer? You know, because we've got one of those. And she said, no, I was actually um, uttering an after bathroom prayer. I said, we have that too. And she said, right. yeah, she said, we actually have a before bathroom prayer too. And I was like, wow, with Jewish digestive systems, we could probably use a before bathroom prayer as well. So then they sort of launched this beautiful conversation about hair covering and dietary laws. Her son had become less observant. And, you know, I work in that space with the Jewish community. And then while we were on this roll, I brought up Israel and like, boom, everything changed. It was all that nice, hey, cousin, you know, dietary laws, hair covering, I brought up Israel, and it was over. Um, and so um, I, you know, I like to kind of go there and try the all the stuff in common. But then that's often um, this thing that divides people. So let's, let's just jump into that piece right now. Um, how has your perspective on Israel changed? Um, first, you met the Jews, and the Jews became humanized, and they became non monsters to you. But where did sort of the Israel narrative, um, you know, develop? Israel, Israel, Israel at that time was an enemy. I, I tell you the truth. So it, it was a two-step change. The first step, okay, Jews are are fine. That's okay. That's that's good. But Israel is still an enemy because, you know what, Allison? We were um, how to say this in the Arab world. They view the Jews as foreign colonialists, as foreign conquerors. They don't tell you the real history about about Jews, and and this is very unfortunate. You know why, Allison? Because in our divine book, the Holy Quran, we recognize many prophets who were actually Jewish and Israelis, and and, and by the way, it's astonishing how the Quran praises those individuals, but we don't have the connection that we can make. That they were Israelis because of the political um, issue with Israel and Palestine. So, I, to be very honest, uh, when I opened my eyes on the Tanakh, when I started to study the Tanakh, when I started to learn Hebrew with this, family, it was it was Ivrit uh, Modernit, and then I, I I stepped further to the Ivrit Nikraeit, uh, the Biblical Hebrew. And as an Arab, to be very honest, I don't want to sound racist, with all due respect, but as an Arab. I value Hebrew more than many Jews. I, I, I have to say this because we, we have the, the authentic pronunciation of letters like het, set, ein. So we really appreciate the, the, how similar this language is to ours, you know. Um, Prayer is Maghrib and ours is Maghrib, right? So we have a exactly. uh, well, yeah. And, and when, I see, when I see Jews who say, I don't speak Hebrew, I don't care. It's really, I say, you, you don't really value this beautiful language. You know, Hebrew was never dead as a dead language. It was, it was nearly dead, but it was also, it was always a ritual language. But Ali Azar bin Yehuda revived it as a spoken language until it was the official language of the land of, of, of Israel. So when I learned more about the Tanakh, when I learned more about the history of the Jewish people, I started to make this connection why the Jewish people are very attached to, to this land. Why is it like very important to them? How Jews are not uh, really uh, Westerners. I always say this. I, I don't mean to offend anyone, by the way, but I always say that, for, for example, you, Allison, you are an American and you're Jewish and uh, Nahum as well. But you, your parents and your grandparents, they were originally from this area. Yep. So, 
So, so Jews are not Westerners. Jews are Middle Easterns. This mm -hmm. is a, a very important, a very important message. Amen. Yes, you. Yes, yes. So, so if you if you understand that they are connected to this region, connected to this land, and and, and you would understand more about Israel's um, existence. And and also one of the things that that made me understand more about Israel and. and Israel's legitimacy is that the fact that Israel is not 75 years old. Israel is 3,000 years old, 75 years young. Yep. This is the message. The first, the second king of Israel is a, by the way, the second king of the children of Israel, we honor him in Islam and we call him a prophet, while in Judaism he's only a king. You know who I'm talking about, David. David. We view David as a prophet and as a king. Mm. The Jews view him as, as, as a king and, and Nathan was the prophet. So imagine how many Muslims around you named Dawood, which is yeah. the Arabic uh, equivalent to David, and they have no idea who David was. Mm. And they have no idea that David moved the capital of Israel from Hebron to Jerusalem when he, uh, when he got it from the Jebusites. You see, this knowledge, not so many Muslims want to know because of the political dispute with Israel. If they leave this aside and if they, open, if, they, if, they, if they think with an open mind, they will reach lots of conclusions and they will reach the truth. And this is what I'm trying to convey to people. I'm not, I'm not just trying to defend Israel. I'm trying to defend Muslim-Jewish relations. But I'm trying to tell people why you should know that Israel is a legitimate uh, uh, state and the Jewish people are indigenous to this land, not foreign co uh, colonialists or conquerors. A hundred percent. I'll just give you a quick, you know, piece from my experience is that for Sephardic or Mizrahi Jews, you will hear people acknowledge that they have some sort of Middle Eastern origin. But for a family like mine that was exiled to Eastern Europe, we get labeled as white and European, and that leads people like Whoopi Goldberg to say the Holocaust was white on white violence. Well, I don't know if you can see how I look on the screen here, but I don't exactly look like pasty white. I've actually, my whole life, I've lived with olive skin um, throughout the year, more so in the summer, but throughout the year. And people have always assumed that I'm ethnic or Middle Eastern or Latina, something like that. And it was a very confusing place to be, to both be told that I'm white and European but like they gassed my people in Europe. My grandfather was lined up with his family to see how many Jews a bullet could go through. So we were never actually welcomed, uh, you know, uh, people in those places. We were there for, you know, different amounts of time until they killed us or kicked us out again with this longing to return to Zion. Um, how do we change this? How do we, I mean, I, as you're talking, I'm like, how do we give you the biggest platform? The problem is that you know, traditional media doesn't want to amplify a voice like yours. They don't want to tell this side of the story. Sadly, there's this idea of, you know, and it's not to say I'm not saying that there's no suffering in the Palestinian people. I think they're suffering under horrible leadership and they're suffering under horrible messaging that has brainwashed them. And, in and they're terrorist organizations that want to kill Jews. Exactly. You know, so I'll be very honest with you, Allison. If I had, if I, you know, you know what makes me, you know what gives me the strength? It's because I'm speaking with a message that I'm fully convinced with and I'm uh, and I'm grateful to God that I saw the truth. I'm not being, you know, I'm not being paid by Musada. Some people think that. You're being paid by Musad, you're getting four million dollars a month. Okay, give me the four million and take half of it, please. <laughs> no, wait, please. But they think because you're just you you you're thinking differently. So that means, but you know, I invested 13 years of knowledge, 13 years of search, 13 years of trying to know what's happening. And 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 when the Abraham Accords happened, I said, thank you, God. I, I, I'm, I'm really happy that the Abraham Accords happened. I wish you can come to the UEE, Allison, and see by yourself how our Jewish brothers are flourishing in the UEE and how they are contributing to the, to the, to the, to the UEE and how they love the leadership of the UEE and how the leadership loves them back. Uh, this it's on. It's on. It's on our list. It's on our Passover list, probably for a future year. So let's talk about Abraham Accords right now. Um, so I actually interviewed the chief rabbi of the UAE a few years ago, and he talked about how maybe the son of the the king after nine eleven was kind of shocked into 
realizing that he's not that kind of Muslim. He doesn't want to promote that kind of Islam. Um, and so he, it was the kind of the wheels were already turning in his head after 9-11 to, to um, try to break from that, I guess, mold. Um, what, you know, how have your average, um, you know, how do I even call a person an Emirati? And what, what's the what's the term? Is it a what's what's the term of a person that lives in the United Arab Emirates? An Emirati? Yeah, of course. Emirati. Yeah, Emirati. How 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 is your average, you know, Emirati reacted to the Abraham Accords? What's changed? What is this new law that we talked I mentioned at the beginning in terms of uh, you know, increased diversity? What what does that look like? Because you've had this personal growth, but now your country, thankfully, has also had this major shift. So I I'll tell you one thing, to be very honest, the UAE. The UAE is blessed with leaders that instilled the teachings of tolerance to its people. And also, you know, Alison, this is something that we have different from our great friends in the U.S. Uh, Gulf countries in general are monarchies. So in monarchies, we follow the leaders. We follow our leadership. We follow the, 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 the head of the tribe. So the head of the tribe or the leader is the president of the UAE, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. May God bless him. So we follow the leaders, but also the conviction in the people. People here in the UAE didn't have problem with Jews, and many of them didn't have problem with Israelis. But still, I'll, t I'll be very honest with you. There are a few who have, like, I, I don't blame them. You know why? You know why, Allison? Because they were brainwashed by media. And, and to be very honest, when I see hate comments on my page, I don't get frustrated because you know what? I was once in their shoe. I was once like them. So it gives me wisdom to deal with things wisely and, and, to, and to try to change people positively. But the Abraham Accords were received uh, with great uh, welcoming in the UAE. You can see people, Emiratis, local people, um, uh, hanging out with, uh, with Israelis in the, in, in the UAE. Uh, but I, I'm just telling you, just to let you know, yeah, there are some people. I would say, I, I would say they are good people with not enough knowledge to know more about Israel. So we need to educate them uh, more about Muslim-Jewish relations, about Israel, and about um, history. And this is what I'm trying to do with my, this is what I'm trying to do with my, with my Instagram, with my platform, to, to promote what's happening in the UAE, and to promote Muslim-Jewish relations and the commonalities, and to tell people to understand more about Israel, because this region will not flourish without Israel. Do you have a sense of kind of how common um, a Muslim with your perspective is? I mean, I know it's a, a large you know, 1.5 billion uh, Muslims in the world. Do you have a sense of kind of where the percentage wise, kind of the most extreme that are supporting terrorists versus the most open and, you know, positive towards Jews? Is there any way for you to kind of surmise such numbers? I, d I don't know. To be very honest, it's a very hard, it's a very hard question, but I see hate. Um, I, see, I see lots of hate. But I, I tell you, the majority of Muslims are very kind, very nice people. But when it comes to Jews, because of the media, I'm telling you, Al Allison, 70 years of media telling people to hate Jews. What do you expect? Right. Would you blame them? No, I, I see it. I, I was raised to hate my own fellow Jews, anyone that was in the Orthodox category, um, without ever having met one myself, only seeing them on the street and thinking the most awful extreme things. So... Uh, fighting the media's depiction of Jews is really, um, you know, my personal life's work as well. And I think we share something very common uh, in this space. But that should give us the reason to fight more for our peaceful message against the waves of hate. A hundred percent. What about, so I asked you sort of the bigger question, and people also ask me questions about how many Orthodox Jews this or that, and it's really hard to know. Um, what about in your circle? What have you been able to do in terms of your own orbit? Because, you know, they say you kind of, you know, change yourself and then maybe hopefully try to affect. I've people. seen many people change. I've seen many people change. Many people change, especially in Expo. I took many of my friends to the Israeli pavilion and I, I told them more about, about, uh, about uh, even though the pavilion was not really, did not talk a lot about the history of Israel. But, you know, I made them meet Israelis, nice people, Isra they, they, you know, Israeli, Israelis are, are so nice. I, I, I say if you, if you hang out with Jewish people, you would realize how family we are. So yeah. many people changed. Many people changed. I love it. So um, I guess, and, and do you have any thoughts? I mean, sort of talking about the relations like this. 
do you have opinions on kind of now changing the conversation to like the Muslim depictions in the media? I wonder because, you know, there's been that pushback of don't always show us as terrorists, which is a very fair comment to make. I wonder if there was a character like you um, on a TV show somewhere, someone, you know, defending the Jews, defending Israel, um, kind of being that peace activist. It wouldn't only be don't make me a terrorist or make me whole and human. It could be a character that could share your kind of perspective with the larger world, because I think, you know, the information is true. The information is real. It touches people deeply when they take the time to do it. Um, but do you have any thoughts about sort of Muslim depictions or representation? Well, I, I hope my reels can do the job. And, and you know, sooner or later, this message will, will, will go viral. And maybe, maybe I would love to see the change of Muslims to depict Jews as their friends and family. Especially Jews, by the way. Of course, all non-Muslims, but especially Jews, Jews, because uh, uh, from Jews, from from your people, we have many people who we praise and honor in our book, like the prophets and the kings and the judges of Israel. And this is this is how I'm trying to convey this message by showing the commonalities, the commonalities between Judaism and Islam, between Arabic and Hebrew, and to try to change people. It's a very noble message. It's worth every trouble. What about Fauda? Are you a fan of Fauda? Do you ever watch that show? I, uh, I'm i not a fan of TV shows anyway. I'm a fan of movies. <laughs> but Fauda, yeah, yeah, it's on I, my list. I was I saw that it was like the number one show um, in Lebanon when it came out, uh, the, the most recent season. And that also gives me hope um, because, you know, I think they do a pretty nice job of showing the complexity and the humanity on both sides and the fact that, you know, more violence le leads to more violence. Um Indeed. What about um, maybe, you know, besides your message going viral, which I, I hope that it will. Um, so, and, yeah, and me, uh, and Mir Tzashem, yeah. Um, in terms of other countries, do you see other countries um, in, you know, kind of the, the Arab world uh, or the Muslim world potentially kind of going next to the Abraham Accords or kind of following it's Saudi Arabia? Maybe there was some murmurings at one point, like any thoughts about what could be next? I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful because the leaders of these countries believe in peace and stability and flourishing this region, and it will happen one day or another. But of course, we have a big challenge that we need to, to resolve. But the road eventually leads to a peaceful region with Israel, not without Israel. So I'm very optimistic. It will take time. We have to be patient, and we will have to strive hard for this noble message. It's a noble message, uh, Alison. It's not just a, a regular mission. It's a noble We change people from hate to love and acceptance. Shalom and salam, right? We uh, we have that as well. Well, um, in, in Hebrew, you've probably heard this by now because you seem to know a lot of Hebrew. We say, Ad meva esrim. You heard that one before? Of course. Um, <laughs> bed, um, betaf. Um, so, you know, really um, until 120 uh, with strength, with determination, um, it's it's really, it's sad that I'm not used to this feeling so often because, um, you know, when you're such a small people at 15 million in the world and, you know, at the young age, you find out how many generations of people and places have hated your people and killed your people and kicked them out, um, you know, messages of peace like this and brotherhood. From our cousins, um, it, it is so warming to the heart, um, and I'm so glad that you didn't get out of that um, Jewish uh, Sephardic home uh, too quickly and that you were placed there and that, you know, um, I do believe that God put you in that position, but you didn't necessarily have to kind of take that call because sometimes God gives us a mission and not everybody always stands up to take the role that we've been given, and so thank you for uh, putting your hishtadlut, putting your efforts out to hear it and act on it. Um, and the Jewish people are incredibly grateful. And uh, really just uh, this message should spread. And uh, and we should uh, merit to see peace in our days. Amen. As we say, Amen. He always said two amens, not one. Amen. 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 All right, and thank you so much. And uh, we'll try to catch you again sometime down the future. Thank you so much for listening. You can catch us same time, same place next week. Bye-bye.